The bird we're concerned with is the, uh, the common miner. It's a native of Southeast Asia, especially India, and it, there it is uh, very much a commensal with humans. It has been introduced into other parts of the world for a variety of reasons. They have become one of the most numerous and certainly the most conspicuous birds uh, in Seychelles. They are omnivorous, they live in flocks, but even within flocks you can usually distinguish mated pairs and it looks as though they, they pair for life. Uh, how long they live, we, we don't know. If you look on YUCN's list of the 100 most invasive animals in the world, there is only three bird species on the list. And the mina is top of the list of the birds. It occupies habitat and nesting sites of, in this case, endemic birds. And it likes to bully other birds. So it's a special bird. It's very nice, but, but not here. <laughs> The reason we're removing the miner is because it has an impact on some of the endemic uh, species um, of birds which have been reintroduced onto Dennis Island. They attack magpie robins, they attack the Seychelles flycatcher, they attack the uh, Seychelles warbler, the Seychelles fody, and they are thought to have a large impact on the uh, stability of the population of these birds, um, which is why we started eradicating them. A first attempt was made to eradicate miners from Dennis Island in the early 2000s, but this was unsuccessful. More is now known about the techniques for eradicating introduced miner populations, and to fulfill its conservation objectives, the decision was made to undertake another attempt to eradicate miners, using techniques that have been tested on other tropical oceanic islands, as well as testing new techniques might prove effective. This second attempt began in May 2010. Due to staff constraints, the project was paused and the minor population increased again. The eradication project restarted in May 2014, with a more intensive program through the recruitment of two volunteers to restart the trapping of miners on a daily basis. Rodent eradications on small islands has become almost routine in that there is a, a, a well-established methodology now. Unfortunately, as far as birds are concerned, we don't have this information at all. So we're very much prodding in the dark and every eradication attempt that we make has to be used as a, a big learning experience as well. And we have learned an awful lot from what we've done here on Dennis Island. Dennis Island is located within the inner island system of the Seychelles. It's comprised of sand and coral and is one of the few carbonate islands within the inner island system. Dennis Island is positioned approximately 96 kilometers north of Mahe, the main granitic island. Dennis Island is being managed to serve a number of functions. Luxury tourism in the form of Dennis Private Island Resort, farming to provide local produce for the hotel, beautiful woodland scenery for the enjoyment of all visitors and residents, and conservation. As a result, the island supports a diversity of habitats. The main vision of Dennis Island is uh, to have uh, a self-sustainable island where running the hotel basically pays for the conservation work that's being done on the island. And they've been doing that quite successfully uh, together with Green Islands Foundation for many years now. The eradication of cats and rats in the early 2000s removed two of the island's serious predators, and large areas of old coconut plantation were transformed into broad-leaved forest. Together, this rendered the island suitable for the introduction of some of Seychelles' most endangered endemic birds, the Seychelles' magpie robin, the Seychelles' foddy, the Seychelles' warbler, and the Seychelles' paradise flycatcher. They have been introduced to provide these species with safeguards against problems they might experience on other islands and to increase their global population in order to reduce the risk of their extinction. Promoting the success of these endangered birds on Dennis has thus become one of the island's major conservation objectives. As part of uh, a uh, GEF-funded uh, protected area project, um, we are looking to proclaim Dennis Island as a protected area. 
under that project there is a component that allows us to do something when we see an, a conservation emergency. Um, and that's when we decided to um, start the mine eradication. In 2010 they removed around 900 birds. Uh, sadly that, that wasn't completed at that point. But um, last year, in 2014, they, they started up the process again. We haven't used uh, poisons here at all. Um, and our, our main tool for most of the programme has been uh, trapping them. Uh, the, the traps that we use uh, have a live decoy miner in the middle and catching compartments around the outside. And the, the live decoy stimulates interest in birds ar uh, around the outside. We also have uh, some bait in the traps. And we found this is a, an extremely effective way of catching birds in the first stages of the eradication. During the first phase of the minor eradication project in May-June, only decoy and mini minor traps were used. Subsequently, the volunteers built several drop traps and a ladder trap. Being quite intensive to monitor, the drop traps were deployed in areas close to the volunteers' accommodation and the ladder trap at the farm where miners aggregate in large numbers. I came after several volunteers had already worked on the island and removed um, 160 birds before I came, just through trapping. It was tailing off towards that point because uh, obviously, you know, when there's more birds on the island, you catch more birds every week. So. Uh, I was, as I was made aware when I came out, I uh, maybe have some, some weeks where it was very quiet. The birds that are left are trap shy. They don't go into the traps anymore. And then the last birds are taken away with shooting. And I've now killed 65. I've shot 65 birds since I have arrived. The tools I've used for this eradication is a uh, binoc with a distance measure, so I can know the distance to the birds before I shoot. Uh, the absolute majority of the birds that I've shot is with this, a silenced 2-2, using subsonic ammunition. So there is no sound of the gun, the only sound the birds hear is the bullet impacting the birds. And that means that the birds they don't hear anything from me. And I've always shot from a hide or from this vehicle. And I always try to target single birds. The shotgun have been used for taking out the last few birds. It's easier to use, no, not the same demands for backstops. And this is a high power sniper rifle. I brought it if the birds will be gun shy. This rifle enables me to take out the mine on 200 meters. They're very clever. Um, they learn very quickly. Um, uh, they can learn to associate uh, humans uh, with things that are happening to them. So this must be taken into account when devising control programs, especially when it comes to shooting. Um, you know, they very quickly learn that uh, a, a man holding an apparent stick can present them with a danger. What the hunter should realize when shooting birds is that uh, any miss is uh, a potential gun-shy bird. Therefore, um, the hunter should only shoot when he is 100% certain that he will hit. What we try to do is get a 100% shot-hit ratio, uh, which we almost achieved. Um, and that has probably helped a lot with um, preventing gun shyness. We have had the hunter on the island for four weeks now and uh, he has uh, shot, I think it's 65 birds up until now and we are unaware of any other minas on the island uh, at the moment. And then um, for the future, the next steps for this project, um, we need to make sure that we um, are 100 percent certain that there is no miners left on the island. So that means that we are going to monitor for several months with a dedicated monitoring team uh, who, who will be going around the island every day in the morning, every day in the afternoon, just listening for uh, miners, seeing uh, if they can find any miners uh, and uh, take them out as 
we spot them. Um, if there are any left, we don't know that. The monitoring is very important. And uh, Murphy's law, it's always there when it comes to conservation. If we would leave two birds here, you can be really sure that it will be a male and a female. That's why it's so important that we go all the way. After miners have been successfully eradicated, provisions should be put in place for potential reinvasion by anthropogenic or natural causes. A protocol should be in place describing action steps to follow in case a miner is sighted. On Dennis Island, we have purchased an air rifle to enable us to shoot any new birds on the island, and several staff on the island have been trained in its use. Yeah, it's extreme importance that not to shoot until you are 100% that you will get it. And like if there in next year there is a miner here, they should take this air rifle and they shoot 100 practice shots before they try to shoot at the miner. Before and during the whole project, island staff and clients were informed of the project and the goals, and activities were explained. Presentations were given on several occasions to ensure that clients and staff understood the reason for culling these birds, to prevent interference with traps, and to alleviate fears of having a hunter on the island, which is something most people are not used to. On first sight it might seem cruel to especially tourists but also staff uh, on the island to keep decoys in a cage and uh, killing birds um, for no obvious reason. Um, so in order to make them understand the importance of what you're doing and the reason why you're doing it, uh, you have to explain to everyone uh, the effect of the mina on uh, the environment. Um, and that will help with getting um, the support that you would like to get from uh, everybody uh, around the project. Since the removal of 90% of the miners in 2011 to 2012, all of the introduced endemic birds have bred more successfully with doubling of magpie robin and tripling of flycatcher populations in only three years. This strongly suggests a link between removal of miners and population growth in endemic birds and clearly indicates the value of complete eradication of miners from Dennis Island. As with any eradication, I don't think you can really estimate what's going to happen afterwards. Um, after the rodent eradication here, uh, we've had wedge-tailed shearwaters who came back nesting, white-tailed tropic birds who started nesting on the ground, um, all things that we didn't necessarily expect to happen. Um, so after the minor eradication, what I hope is that the endemic birds will flourish, that their populations will reach a much higher carrying capacity. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm, I think I'm seeing differences in bird behavior already. The flycatchers are actually more visible than they used to be when there were minas around. So the initial results of um, the eradication uh, or the effects of the eradication on the, uh, on the environment are very promising indeed. We've already learned uh, from monitoring the four endemic birds uh, that uh, have been introduced here uh, that removal of miners is having an impact on them. They're improving their production, the populations are increasing and their breeding success is increasing. Uh, but in addition, um, there are some seabirds nesting on this island and I have an impression, it's only an impression, uh, that white terns are increasing in numbers. The numbers breeding here are increasing. Um, in addition, last year, for the first time, lesser noddies began nesting on the island when the number of miners was very low. And I th think this could be a result of cause and effect as well. Uh, whether other species are going to colonise the island now that miners are on the way out, uh, we have to wait and see. Uh, there is an experiment going on at the south of the island where we're trying to reintroduce sooty terns onto, uh, onto the island after an absence of over 200 years. Miners also predate on skinks and geckos, and numbers of these might also increase following miner removal. 
The impact on the biodiversity on the island after successfully removing minas from Dennis Island is yet to be known, but it is sure that this project is a big leap forward in creating a natural and safe haven for many of the animals on the island. As far as we know, Dennis Island is uh, at the moment, if this all works out uh, well and we prove that there's no minas left, uh, the second island in the world where a mine eradication has been successful. So from a Green Islands Foundation perspective, we are very thrilled if we manage to uh, go public with that at some point. And we hope that uh, other islands and other organizations all over the world will be able to benefit from the lessons we've learned. To summarize, for conducting a successful mine eradication, we have the following recommendations. First, Make sure you have the team and the budget in place to see the eradication through till the very end, when there are zero birds left. It's advisable to have one person in charge for the entire duration of the project. Start by taking out the majority of miners by trapping, poisoning or other tested methods before you start shooting. On Dennis, we got almost 95% of the total population through trapping. For us, decoy traps have proven to be the most effective. Move them around in places where miners aggregate. Also, we found that having a two-person trapping team fully dedicated to the task worked best. Shooting is a last resort. Only start shooting if all other methods are starting to fail and if there are very few birds left. You want to prevent gun shyness at all costs. Use an experienced and extremely effective hunter and try to achieve a 100% shoot-kill ratio. To avoid gun shyness, use suitable equipment. In our case, we tried to avoid making noise, so a silenced .22 with subsonic ammunition was used for the majority of the birds and a shotgun for the few remaining individuals at the very end. When all birds are thought to be eradicated, continue monitoring by a dedicated and trained team and keep all equipment in excellent condition to take immediate action if required. Have a protocol in place on what to do if a miner reappears. Make sure you communicate clearly about the eradication project to the general population, tourists, hotel staff, etc.